When a scatter plot shows correlation between two quantitative variables, the next step is to dig a little bit deeper and identify which one is likely the cause. Usually when you have two correlated variables, one causes the other to change. However, that is not always the case. So we'll look at examples where it is and where it is not. In this first example, we have height and age. Which one causes which? The taller you are doesn't make you necessarily older. However, the older you are, the taller you tend to be. Um, and this would be probably limited to the ages of, let's say, 0 to 20. But your age, the older you are, causes you to be taller. If you're very short, that doesn't mean that you go backwards in age or you be, are just very young. You will continue to age no matter what. So the next example has milk consumption and bone strength. Some people with strong bones happen to just drink a lot of milk, but it's more likely that people who first drink milk will then end up with stronger bones. So when you think of causation, sometimes it makes sense to say which one likely comes first and then which one will react to that activity. So if you drink lots of milk, your bones should react by becoming stronger. This uh, interesting little example here, puppies and happy kids. So let's say the number of puppies and the number of happy kids in a room. Do happy kids cause puppies to appear in the room? Mm, probably not. But if you have puppies in the room, would that make the number of happy kids go up? Yeah, probably would. Um, of course, it depends on the kid, but on a typical situation, let's imagine that puppies bring joy to these children it causes the children to be happy. So it causes the number of happy kids to go up. Here we have child's income and parent's income. Child income, parental income. Whenever you're looking at causation, you're not quite sure which way it's going to go. Why would the kid's income uh, cause the parent's income or why vice versa? You typically want to look at time. Which one came first? Now, the parental income, the parent's income, is usually going to come before the child's income. The parent is the older one. So if you assume that growing up your parents had a certain income, it's typical that the child then would try to uh, either achieve a very similar lifestyle or a better lifestyle um, than their parents. Whereas if the parent had a very low income, same thing. The child might also only strive to a lower income or may not have had as many opportunities growing up that limits them to a lower income. So there is a correlation, but it's the parent that's affecting the child. Depending on how, if the child happens to be very successful financially, that usually doesn't turn around and affect how much the parent makes at work. Their work opportunities are pretty set by the time their kid starts making money. And then the last one, the temperature and the grass color. No matter what color my lawn is, it is not going to change the temperature outside. However, the temperature outside will definitely change the color of my lawn. So when you're thinking about causation, some things are not really going to be affected by a smaller thing. Things like temperature are much larger and more powerful than my lawn, which is not quite as influential. So temperature would cause in this example, we have the cost of your home and the cost of your car. Most families are going to have some sort of correlation between those two uh, items. The more expensive their home is, it's more likely that they'll have a more expensive car. And as this data here shows, that doesn't mean that every family with a large home is going to have a very expensive car or vice versa. However, the general trend shows that the more larger your house, the more expensive your house, the more expensive your car will be. But which one causes which? Does the car cause the home price or the home cause the car? It turns out that in some cases, 
there's a third variable hiding out in the background that you don't see on the graph that's really causing both of these. So I would consider these both response variables to something else called a lurking variable. That's one that's in the background that you don't see. And in this case, I would suggest that it's the income of the person. If they have a higher income, they're probably going to be able to afford a more expensive car and afford a more expensive home. So the income causes the car price and the home price. It's in the background. You don't see it. It doesn't show up anywhere on the scatter plot. That's why we call it a lurking variable. It's a variable that you do not see. It does not show up on the graph. Quick definition here. A variable is not displayed but causes both of the displayed variables. One important thing to note is that correlation, such as the correlation between the home price and the cost of the car, does not imply causation. They are not the same thing. In many times when things are correlated, one of the two variables causes the other. However, in many other cases, there is a lurking variable in the background, so you need to be careful. So you look at some examples of where this can come up. Here we have taxes and heat bill. So the amount you spend in taxes and the amount you pay on your heat bill each month. What might link these two variables? I would suggest that it would be the size of your home. Both of these would be response variables to the size of your home. If you have a larger home, you're probably going to pay more in taxes. And if you have a larger home, you're probably going to have a larger heat bill. Here we have number of hours of football watch and number of hours of baseball watch. There's a few directions you could take this one, uh, but neither of these really seems to cause the other one. Watching football doesn't really want if you want to watch more baseball or vice versa. So let's assume that these are both response variables, and something that could cause both of these is just being how much you like sports. If you are a general sports fan, you'll probably watch many hours of both sports. You could come up with lots of different reasons that could link these two. Um, and especially with something as vague as how much you like sports, uh, there might be even more specific things that would link uh, specifically baseball and football. In this example, we have number of carpet stains and number of ripped clothes. Now, if you're in my mindset a little bit, those two things come from one cause, the destructive little puppy in the room. So the number of puppies you have will probably determine how many of your clothes are ripped. Will also determine how many of the stains that you have on your carpet. Because carpet stains don't cause your clothes to rip. Ripped clothes don't cause carpet stains. But uh, puppies or other animals in your home definitely could cause both. Here we have water bill and the number of people in the family. Hmm. In this particular example, it looks like one of these actually could cause the other. It would make sense if the number of people in your family did affect your water bill. So in some of these problems, we're not going to have a lurking variable. and In this case, it's actually just a trick problem. So yes, the number of people in the family sure does cause your water bill to go up because the more people you have taking showers, using dishes, things like that, the more water you're going to use. Here we have number of hits and number of strikeouts. If you assume that there is a direct relationship where both of these are going up together, then you would want to assume that the number of at-bats, the number of attempts, would cause both of these to go up. If you took a different perspective and didn't assume that both of these had to go up together, you could say number of hits goes up, number of strikeouts goes down, or vice versa, if it's an inverse relationship, then the cause might be the uh, ability of the pitcher, or the weather, or things like that. That would cause more people to strike out or more people to get hit. So depending on the type of relationship, that might also cause uh, you to change your lurking variable. So just be careful there. 
and this last one, the last four digits of your phone number and your age. The reason that neither one of these causes the other is because these two things are not even correlated. You first have to be correlated. You f have to form some sort of pattern, some sort of relationship between these values before you can start figuring out which one causes which. If there is no relationship whatsoever, then there is definitely no cause. One of these is definitely not causing the other. And that would be correlation and causation.